Good morning, everyone out there. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Integrative Psychonautics. In today's video, we are going to be talking about one of the major kind of simple but profound life lessons that I've learned from my use of psychedelics over the years. And this is the lesson of knowing your dose. I'd love to explain to you today how this applies, not only as a uh, an obvious truth within psychedelic use, but also as a broader understanding of an approach to life. So uh, if that interests you watch on and just really briefly here please help me grow the channel if you can uh, if you like this kind of content do a favor and maybe leave a comment to engage to let the algorithm know that you're watching give a thumbs up if you like this content uh, and if you really like the content or you like my delivery or you feel like this is uh, aligned with your interests or pursuits please consider subscribing to the channel all of that would make a huge difference to me uh, and help me to grow the message and just grow the channel here. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, with the shameless self promo out of the way, let's talk about knowing your dose. Okay, so today's video is absolutely a bit more of a lighter take. This is uh, meant to just be an enjoyable kind of thought provoking video and uh, perhaps a little kind of break from all the kind of heavy, intense talking about trauma and et cetera, et cetera, right? But uh, with that being said, I hope that you really take this to heart and really consider this as a concept for your life. Uh, even though this is a very light, simple, kind of playful framework to look at your life through, it's still very profound. It's actually a very deep life lesson if you really take it in as such. So I hope you entertain it and I hope you get value out of this idea. So uh, where do I want to start with this? Uh, there's a very famous kind of saying um, when it comes to kind of herbalism and medicine and, you know, working with different kind of medicinal plants that the difference between uh, a medicine and a poison is often the dose, right? And so what I want to talk about today is this idea of getting your dose right in every area of your life, in all the different things you're up to and all the different things that you're engaging throughout your day getting the dose right or having this as kind of a target in the back of your mind when you're doing each thing, kind of checking in. Was that enough of that thing? Was that too much of that thing? How did that impact me? Starting to think about the dosage of all the different inputs in your life, not just you know a drug or a psychedelic in particular or anything like that, but what's the dosage for all the different things you take in in a day, right? So this, like I said in the intro, is something I learned in a really obvious, profound, easy way with psychedelics. So if you're someone who has done psychedelics or is thinking about doing psychedelics and you uh, are a little too cavalier with the dosing, you're a little too free, a little too comfortable, just trusting that they're always going to be fun and easy and enlightening and, and beautiful, sooner or later you find out kind of the hard way usually that... Uh, that if you go a little too hard with the dose and you're a little too uh, free with it, uh, you can put yourself into a situation of being profoundly uncomfortable and overwhelmed, right? And so this becomes a great teaching in and of itself that knowing the dose of the psychedelic makes all the difference in terms of, you know, being really kind of a mellow experience or like a really engaging, blissful, beautiful experience or being an overwhelming, overloading, overstimulating experience. Uh, fortunately with psychedelics, when we take a little too much, we're not really at risk of, you know, moral danger, uh, at least with classical psychedelics. And so this is a great way to kind of learn that lesson without really, um, having to be in a life-threatening situation and you do this enough times and you start to realize that dosage really really matters when it gets to getting these experiences right right and then if you start to think about that and and take that awareness away you know really what's happening there is when you get your dose right or wrong it's it either can regulate you and, and deepen your experience of regulation, or it can dysregulate you, right? And you know, as as if if and excuse me, if any of you have been watching the channel recently and you've been paying close attention, you know that this idea of regulation, of nervous system regulation, is really central to the message I've been bringing lately. And for anyone who's just catching this video randomly. Uh, where I'm at with teaching people about how to use psychedelics safely and how to use psychedelics for therapy and things like this is understanding that there's a more fundamental skill that needs to be in place for uh, you know personal healing, personal growth, 
pretty much across the board in your life, and that is nervous system regulation. Regulation meaning feeling balanced, feeling safe, feeling present, feeling alive, feeling comfortable, right? And so this is the fundamental thing we need to get right that everything else rests on, including our ability to use psychedelics in a successful, constructive way. And so nervous system regulation is really at the foundation of the rest of your healing journey here. And so because of that, we want to be looking at all the different things that regulate us or dysregulate us, right? And, and not just um, in terms of inside the bubble of doing therapeutic work or you know using psychedelics or something like that, but across the board in our lives, we want to start to think about what regulates us and what dysregulates us. And this is really kind of like, there's there's an implicit thing here that I wanted to spell out, which is that, you know, self-regulation is a broader skill set than therapy. Self-regulation is a broader uh, approach to life than just a certain set of techniques to regulate yourself. Self-regulation is a broader thing than just something that matters in psychedelic therapy. It's a huge fundamental cross-contextual need for your nervous system across the board in your life, right? So we want to start to think of self-regulation as reaching out into our lifestyle and all of the different choices we make throughout the day and throughout the week and throughout the years in our life. It's not just limited to healing. That's kind of what I'm saying here. And so I think it's really helpful then to start to think about and look at all the different things we do again as inputs in our life and really think about is this regulating me is this dysregulating me and and think about that in terms of dosage of that thing so let me give a few examples here of what i mean some obvious examples to start and then we'll kind of go off into the weeds a bit here um supplements right or caffeine right these are things where if you take the right amount you're probably going to feel better. You're going to feel healthier. You're going to feel stronger, maybe more energized, more relaxed, what have you. If you overdose on certain supplements, it can really dysregulate you. Or obviously, if you overdose on caffeine, this is kind of a classic one we all do at some point. You're jittered for hours. Your heart's beating through your chest. You're maybe sweating. Your brain's racing. You can't think. It's rough. It's not fun at all, right? It's really, if you're trying to be productive or engaged or present or sharp, you can go way over that line and then you're just kind of a mess for hours and hours, right? So that's not knowing your dose. That's going too far with the dosing of caffeine. Again, the other way, if you go under your dose with caffeine, you can feel perhaps like you're not fully awake or like you're not um, firing on all cylinders like you're used to, right? Same thing with, with uh, supplements, like I was saying. You know, you can take a calming supplement, take too much of it, and all of a sudden you need to take a nap because you're too sleepy. Or I've had scary experiences with supplements where my heart rate dropped really low. My blood pressure dropped really low because I took a little too much of something that was too calming. Uh, other way around, you take something that's really stimulating like ginseng or shilajit or some of these other kind of stimulating supplements, same thing applies in the other direction. You can end up wired, overwhelmed, manic, stressed, um, strong fight or flight activation happening just from not getting the dose right. Uh, some other examples here. Thinking about the foods you eat and what types of foods. Getting the dose right with healthy foods. How? What's the frequency there in terms of how often you should be eating healthy foods? Getting the dose right with junk food and indulgences, right? We all have our little things we like to do to kind of, you know, uh, enjoy a bit of uh, extra pleasurable food on occasion, but getting the dose right on that so that it's not dysregulating your system and adding more stress and accumulating toxins and unhealthy stuff in the body, but Rather, it's just a little kind of divergence from your generally healthy diet here or there, that kind of a thing. Um, let me see, uh, other big ones, exercise, right? So exercise is one of these things that, uh, you know, you over-exercise, you can really exhaust yourself and wear yourself out, 
overstress your nervous system, you don't do enough exercise, and it doesn't really feel as life affirming and profound and uh, you know supportive of your mental health and supportive of your physical health as it can, right? Like some, I notice when people are often kind of lukewarm on exercise, they tend to be under exercisers, right? So this again, this is a thing to get the dosage right, so that you're really getting the full benefit of movement and exercise. Um, you know, obviously, uh, in terms of therapy and therapeutic techniques, you know, and therapeutic learning and understanding, same thing. You can overdo, you can take in too many therapy models and try too many therapy techniques or do them too regularly, or too intensely, too deeply, and end up dysregulating yourself, end up overwhelming yourself or confusing yourself or kind of, um, you know, having it be too much too fast for your system to be able to like meet and connect with and feel comfortable with, right? Um, same thing with psychedelic work, right? Like uh, some people get really excited about psychedelics that all of a sudden they start taking them frequently. And I've certainly gone through that phase myself when I was younger, so I get it. But it's easy to overdo it. And then uh, generally for most people, that's not a harmful thing if you have a small period of overdoing it, but it can really space you out for a while. It can really kind of, uh, you know, give you more a DPDR, depersonalization, derealization. It can um, unground you. It can make your cognition a little bit slower in the short term. And it can overall, you know, just too much frequency or too intense. Like if you have a really big experience and either it's more than you can handle or it's big and positive, but then you need to do a lot of work to integrate that and really ground that back out. These are all things that you want to be thinking about. What's my dose here that that's going to work for me? That's going to help me feel more regulated rather than less regulated. Uh, another interesting example here that a a lot of us may not consider is what's your dose of certain people in your life, right? What's the right dose for you of um, certain characters that you interact with, whether they're family members or acquaintances or friends or best friends? You know, sometimes we have best friends that we adore, but uh, we can't be around them that often before it starts to be maybe a little unhealthy or off balance for us. Uh, we may have acquaintances that we, um, you know, really enjoy, but we're not seeing enough of, and we might want to kind of escalate that friendship and, you know, see, see if we can hang out more often. We may have a family member that's really triggering and too much, and we have to really portion out how much time we spend around them, right? So you want to start to think about this. Um, you know, another great example, of course, is the internet. This is another huge one, you know, uh, with people spending more and more time on their phone, on screens, online, listening to podcasts, blah, 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 blah. Another great example is watching bad news on TV. You know, consider your dose with that. What's the what's the dose where you don't get dysregulated when you watch it? Because the news obviously these days is full of bad news, right? And so think about across the board in your life all these different inputs you have, you know, and think about that there's, there's a right amount for you where it's not too much, but you get to enjoy it. And it's not perhaps too little and you're getting the full benefit out of it. And with each of the things you're doing, consider how there is a point where you can under or overdose them. And it's probably going to have detriment. Uh, there are certain ex exceptions to this, right? Like I think in general, um, you know, if you're eating healthy food and you're not overeating, right? You're not overdoing the healthy food, but you're eating like a, a comfortable portion of healthy food, you know, regularly enough, that's probably something that, you know, your dosage can be 100% healthy food and that's going to work for you, right? Um, I was going to say water, but we, uh, you, I'm sure we've all heard that if you overdrink water, you can flush out your electrolytes and that can actually be a, a life threatening situation. So, um, even with water, you need to know your dose, right? And thankfully, for the most part, in a lot of these areas, especially when we're talking food and water and things like that, our body has built-in mechanisms to let us know when something's off and we're under or overdoing it and we'll get cravings or we'll get kind of disgust responses. But this becomes less true when we're looking at, say, therapy or when we're looking at relationships or when we're looking at other things. We're looking at um, trying to figure things out with ourselves or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so 
I want to just give you this idea. I want to give you this metric to look at and start to think about your life. What's the right dose for each of the inputs in my life? And, you know, since I'm using this word input here, I want to maybe just unpack that a little bit and tag on a whole other idea since I'm using that word and it's kind of bringing this to mind to share with you guys, which is to sometimes take stock of your life and look at yourself in terms of inputs and outputs. All right, so what are the, the things you're consuming and taking in as inputs? And this could be, again, relationships, media, food, exercise, sunlight, uh, amount of sleep you're getting, da, 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 all the things that you do for yourself, right? And then look at your outputs. What What's your mood like? What's your energy level like? What's your productivity like? What's your focus like? What's your et cetera, et cetera. And start to evaluate and consider the connection there. You know, So kind of looking at ourselves as a system for a moment and looking at the connection here between your inputs and your outputs. And that's really fundamentally kind of what's underneath this idea of knowing your dose. So hopefully that's interesting. Hopefully you know this isn't too light or too philosophical for you. I'd be curious to know what you think. Does this resonate for you? Does this make sense? Is this something you think about already? Is this something you've never thought about before? I'd love to know. If you want to leave a comment down below, that would be amazing. Uh, and I have more content on the way for you guys soon here. I Just FYI, in the background, I'm working on a course, a guided supported course for mystical experience type experiences with psychedelics. Uh, and I'm working on other courses for people on how to do healing work and self-healing work and processing work and stuff like that. So uh, plenty more to talk about here on the channel. And um, thank you for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day. Take care.